support and resistance trading is very important. And the concept of support and resistance is crucial to any trader's success. Okay. Now, the word support and resistance can be a little bit confusing because support became, can become resistance and resistance can become support. So let's give you an example. And it's a very easy example because I don't actually in my verbiage don't use the word support and resistance kind of correctly. Okay. Because it's it's unimportant to what the actual line itself is or the price level is itself. So I call them steps. They're steps on a ladder. When you're climbing up the ladder, you're stepping on the steps going up. When you're coming down the ladder, you're still stepping on those steps coming down. But each one of those steps was crucially important because if you missed it going up, you'd fall. If you missed it coming down, you'd fall. So these are levels that are steps in the progress of an asset's movement. So let's close our eyes for a minute and think about an elevator. Now, you walk into this new high-rise hotel in Dubai that's got 100 stories of magnificent glass. Okay. One of these things you see in the papers that they built, these crazy, huge, humongous, or what about that one a couple of weeks ago or that had the whole aquarium in the center that burst and fell, you know, 30 floors of aquarium, okay, whatever. But you get in one of those outrageous elevators. Okay. You've never been in this building before. You don't know anything about it. And you're just going to ride that elevator for a while to have fun. You want to look at the view. You want to see what you see. You want to see all the rich people getting on the elevator, the rich people getting off the elevator. And, you know, maybe there's some shopping floors. Maybe there's a couple restaurants on a couple floors. Maybe there's a viewing deck on the top. We don't know. So we step on the elevator. Okay. Now, you notice one thing that happens when you get on the elevator. It's got security. Okay. And if you haven't pushed in your code, you can't touch the floor. So it means you can't do anything. You are on that elevator and you can just observe. Okay. Sounds like a long story, but it's going to make a point. And it's going to stick with you for the rest of your trading. I promise you. Now, all you can do is observe. Now, you look at your watch and you stepped on that elevator and it's nine o'clock in the morning. And you rode that elevator up and down, and up and down, and up and down for two hours now. And you observed. And what did you notice? Most of the time when the elevator stops on the ground floor, it fills up with people. And it shoots all the way up to the 18th floor and it stops there and when the doors open, you can see there's a big conference room and a big sign. You know, you can't get off the elevator, but you can see all the signage for these conference rooms. The door closes and it goes up to 22. It opens there and you see actually stores. It's got a mid a high rise shopping mall. Door closes again, goes up a couple more floors, and now you see some office suites. Closes again, it goes up a couple more floors, and you see hotel rooms. But it only got you up to the 42nd floor. And every time you get to the 42nd floor, it fills up, or some people get on, some people get off, but you end up on that elevator with almost everybody off and maybe some fresh new people, and it goes down. Well, guess what? I just observed that I got on the elevator and it goes from zero to 42. I didn't get on the elevator that takes me to the 42nd to the 90th floor. One observation. When we go down, we notice that it stops at the 22nd again, at the 18th again, goes all the way down to the to the, lo to the lobby and lets a whole bunch of people off. Goes back up, 18, 22, 42, back down. Now we know at this time of day now, or we've observed at this time of day, This elevator will mostly likely stop 0, 18, 22, 42. 
When it turns around and goes down, it's going to go down at 42, 18, 22 down to the lobby. And we can also probably judge how many people have gotten on the elevator or off the elevator. Because we notice when we get to 18, we have people getting off, but nobody getting on. We go up to 22, we have lots of people actually getting on when we're going down. Not when we're going up. We get up to 42, we get the few people left on the elevator getting off, and then more coming on and going, most of those people are going straight down to zero. What we've done is we've observed the movement of an asset. And by observing the movement of this asset, we can determine what we can expect in that movement of that asset at the times that we're on this particular elevator at this particular time of day, at this particular day of the week. And when we go back to Dubai two months from now, I go back to the same hotel at nine o'clock in the morning, and we did this on a Monday morning, we can expect that same observations to hold true. So if we were to take this and draw this across our charts and start making analogies based on whatever this asset is trading in this area and moving in this type of market, these are the crucial steps on that ladder or the floors on that movement of that elevator that this, this price should react to. Okay. Now, this was in the morning. Maybe in the evening when there's more activity or say after 10 o'clock or maybe the building is very busy at 12 o'clock. Maybe they have a restaurant on 18 and they have a lounge on 22 and on 42 they have a big dining a Ben Hall, whatever. We would also know this for the, that time of day. Okay. There's other times of day, there's other floors, there's other levels. Okay. Now, the fact is, this asset, when it reaches these levels, for instance, I was hypothetically using gold, okay, in my introduction. I don't know where gold is trading at today. But we know 2,000 is like the top of the line for gold. It doesn't really ever go below 1,000. Okay. So anytime that we see gold between 12 and 1,400 in this type of market, we can use those floors in between to understand and apply our observation. Now, once we've had these observations, we can then add other pieces of information to determine what we could do. So let me pop up a live chart. Okay, now this is the Euro US dollar chart. I'm giving you these disclaimers because it's required by the regulator. I am not endorsing the Euro US dollar. This is my standard teaching chart. I teach every class from the Euro US dollar one hour and 30 minute charts. Whatever we analyze tonight, we're not talking about making a trade. We're not talking about for you to hang, finish with me or while you're sitting there being on a platform making a trade. We're teaching you how to read the markets. Now, if we look at all of these lines, go way across. These are lines or levels or steps on the ladder that when the asset was trading historically, not today, because we're not going in watching the elevator up and down today and then making trading decisions. We watched that elevator a month ago, six months ago, 12 months ago, you know, last year when we were on vacation, you know, maybe we have a conference that's every year at the same time in Dubai. We can apply that. We don't look at just the last hour, the last few minutes. These levels are drawn on your charts and projected forward into the future. They hold forever. So what you observed in that elevator, unless something radically changes, will hold true moving forward. Now, there is no law, there's no rule 
that says that elevator must stop at 18. There's no rule that says it must stop at 22. What we've done is we've analyzed its movement to make very good decisions that it most likely will. Now, <coughs> these lines on my charts, these dashes and dots, are really not, how do I explain, are not important to you, they're important to me because it is my system. Okay. I, I have a legend, a private legend, that I color code these lines based on when I drew them on the charts, how long ago that they were drawn, how many times that they have been important, and how many times they've held true. Like this green level is very, very old. Now I say very old, it wasn't until the last year that the euro was even down at this level. But every time the euro was at this level, this level, price level of 107. Okay, now the other thing you have to remember is support and resistance levels are not definitive exact numbers. Okay, we're not going to say that the latter step is exactly, it's not like an elevator. It's not at exactly 107.661. Even though that's the price we're doing there, it's a level. It's a, you know, it's around 107.6. Okay. Now, I make my dashes, my dots, and I'm constantly changing. And the more these hold recently, the more important they become to me. So greens are my very, very big go. Solid lines tell me they're strategically very important. The solid gold line down here was on my charts from way back when move forward and look how important that price level was here, okay? If we take my green levels, okay, here and here, look at how they held all the way from back here moving forward and look how important they've been in the last couple of days of trading to you, okay? And as price moves up or down, these lines will, they're already drawn on my charts, will continue being you know, forward because I don't need to see the support and resistance lines that I drew on my charts when the euro was trading at 127, 128, until the euro moves up to that level and these lines are already on the charts. They will just appear as the euro goes up. The longer you trade an asset, the more you have these on your charts. And what these become are strategic important areas. And these areas that you have, and when you can see them holding important, okay, you could actually have made some honestly good trading based on these levels. Look at this. Every time it hit 107.6, it bounced off up and came down. Every time it came down to the 107.1, it bounced back up. Okay. Here, it, did, it went through the green. That's what I said. It can go right... But look at how important my gold level held it. It moved back up and look where it is. Look what happened here when it came back to the 107661. Well, if I was using all this for entry and exit points of trades to, and also using it to set my stop losses as well as my risk management levels, okay, and my profit levels, look at the beautiful trades we could have gotten in since the ninth of the month. We could have entered when it bounced off of this level. We could have entered a trade here when it bounced off and then turned around and came back. Okay, we would have gotten out of the markets. We could have then re-entered the market here. We could have sat till it bounced here and then traded it up to the next level. And we could have let it run, but where are we going to put our, our take profit point? At that resistance level okay. or that strategic price level or that ladder. Because imagine a painter climbing up and down that ladder, painting the outside of your house. He's stepping up, stepping down, step, hoping he doesn't miss that step. But sometimes he stumbles. He doesn't fall off the ladder because he grabs himself. But sometimes he misses that step. But understanding where to place these important levels or these key levels, because what makes you a better trader than the next guy is getting these levels on your charts and getting them on, there's no rule. 
it's done through what I call eyeballing. It is done through observing price movement and looking at historic charts. Okay, by going back and let me get my marker off here. Give me a second here. Okay. By going back and looking at this price chart and looking at every time a level came up and drawing these lines. That's what I said, these lines project forward. Okay. And they just continue out going forward. And as you put them on your charts, every time that there's been a strategically important point, okay, you want to observe it and then perhaps put a level on your charts and color code them. Maybe this is a new level. The price, you know, when it was here last time, bounced off of it and on, but there was a lot of congestion at that price. So that told you that price might be important in the future. Now, the next time it came to this red line here, maybe it didn't help. We say, you know what? That level's just a waste of time. It just happened to be a hypothetical thing. So I'll get it off my charts. It might have held forever and it becomes more important. So you might want to darken in those levels. Okay. But you do this by observation. Now, I did prepare for you a short little presentation on exactly how you do this because it gets very long and boring. So I did a little presentation because it allowed me to speed it up a little bit and edit out some parts and give it to you in a very concise manner, in a visual manner, so that you can see, because once you see how you put them on your charts, because unfortunately, when you're starting out and you don't have all these lines on there, you're starting from zero. And you have to get these lines on there, okay, or these levels on there. So imagine you're a new painter. Your boss just bought you the first ladder. He hands you the ladder, tells you to go back of the house to paint. Okay. You're not going to be able to really run up and down that ladder yet because you haven't built that confidence up yet. But you're new at it. With time, you've got all these levels on there, and you you know you don't have to draw them anymore because they're just on there. Okay. But where do you start, and how do you put them on? And then how do you get these beginning points? So let me just share with you, and unfortunately, I do talk on, on the presentation, but I can't talk over top of it. So it's only a couple minutes long, but let me share it with you. And it's going to show you a really quick version of how to do this very quickly and put them on your charts and where to start with and how to actually do this. Okay, so here we have the daily chart of the FTSE 100. And as you can see, currently the price is up at the 7300 level and has spent the last couple of months around the 7000 level. Now to demonstrate how to identify and plot support and resistance areas, I'm going to scroll back on the chart to the last time the price was in the same region as it is now. This way we can use the support and resistance areas we plot from the previous price action to see if they have any significant impact on this price action that's happened over the last few months. So I'm going to draw two red lines, one above this price action and one below. Very quickly. There we are. Now we want to scroll back and find the last time that the price was between these two lines so we can use it to identify and plot the support and resistance areas for this price region. So if we scroll back we find that the last time price was in this particular region was sort of December, January to August 2016. So in order to start plotting the support and resistance areas, we first need to identify where they are. And as I said in the video previously, we need to spot the points where price has had a significant reaction. And to do this, we want to find where price has either been heading in a particular direction, has stopped and reversed, like here, or where it has stalled for a significant amount of time before either breaking through a particular area or reversing. So this area here, for example. And to plot these areas, I'm going to take my circle tool and I'm just going to first pick out all the reactions that I can see on this particular region of price action. So as I said before, I'm just picking out 
all the reactions where price has either reversed or stalled and I'm just highlighting them so I can see them more easily. Fantastic. Okay, and now to plot the areas, I'm going to take my line tool and I'm going to work my way down the chart until I come to a reaction point. So the first reaction point I come to is this one here. And I want to encapsulate this reaction with the two lines. So I want to take the highest point the reaction occurs and I want to try and place my line at the lowest point where the reaction occurs. And then once I've done that, I can delete my circle. So here we have our first support and resistance area. And then all we're going to do is work our way down the chart, picking out these reaction points, their lowest and highest levels, another one here, another one here. This one has more than just a one reaction from it, which is fantastic as it gives this particular area a little bit more weight in future use. If we come down a bit further, we've got this one here. This is there. Actually this one could probably come a little bit lower and encapsulate that reaction as well. And then we've got one down here. There, another one here, to there, and then we've got another one here, to there, and then we've actually got another one here, to there. And then we can delete our circles as all of these reactions should now have been encapsulated in the areas that we've drawn. So that one has, yep, yep, yes, 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 and yes. Now you may have spotted. Okay, so, I'm sorry. It is a little bit boring and monotonous and time consuming, but it's only the first time you do it. Once you have them on your charts, you never have to do them again. Okay. And you only have to do them when price moves to a different level that it hasn't traded before. In other words, if you had done all that around the euro, US dollar, say between the 104 level and the 108 level, okay, until the euro moved above 108 and started moving up, you'd never have to do it again. So what you would do after that point is as price move, those lines on your chart, okay, will continue forward into ever. Okay. Once you have those on your chart, yes, if you see that a new level is holding or a new level is becoming critical, you can add another line under your charts, but you've got them, okay? And what eventually you will have them all up and down your charts. Now, sometimes they will fade out of necessity because that price is no longer important, but that becomes important. There are other ways also to put support and resistance on your chart. One of those ways is using what they call pivot points. I hate pivot points. I think they're a big waste of time, but I just clicked on pivot points and you see all the new lines that were put on my charts. Those are all the gold lines that were just dropped on. Okay. Pivot points are mathematical calculations. Okay. And they use the current price, the high, the low, the close, and just do a calculation. I don't think they have any relevance, but some people like them. Okay. I don't use them. Because they are, they, they, they're just some kind of a formula that somebody came up with. And there are one S1, R2, S2, and they're just simple calculations. Another way of adding critical support and resistance to your charts, let me get rid of these, is by adding Fibonacci retracements. Okay. Oh. Let me get rid of these, sorry. Let me just get this chart up to where we were. 
Oops. Okay, now we can use our Fibonacci retracement tool and drop our Fibonacci levels on our charts and use those as support and resistance levels. Now, Fibonacci's are very good tools. I use Fibonacci's over top of my support and resistance levels because Fibonacci's are based on calculations by the prior uptrend or downtrend because an asset will tend to retrace its, pro pro its previous movement by certain percentages. And then you can combine those together like here we have our fib level, our 06181 fib level, which is a very critical fib level here. And it's directly between my major support and resistance lines. So what it's doing is breaking down and giving me another crucial point between that level. Okay. My 78.6, my one, my 23.6. So it's giving you more, but me, for me, eyeballing is what I showed you to do is critically important because it's what makes you a better trader than the guy sitting across the room from you. Because everybody who uses, who uses pivot points, who uses indicators is using oscillate are using the same calculus they're using and doing the same thing what makes you any different now fib levels are a little bit personalized because you have to determine what you think is the absolute or the critical low and the critical high of the previous movement but it's still basically the same formula only you have these levels on your charts that you drew on here only you because it was your work and this one gives you unique. And now what you do is you know exactly where these steps are in this elevator, okay, or where these floors are in the elevator by your observation, okay? And this makes you an individual trader and a guy who knows what the market is doing and why it should be doing, and you know exactly why these levels work. Now, Again, I prepared for you another little presentation. Somebody said the volume wasn't so high. If the volume isn't enough for you to hear the recording, turn off the volume on your speakers. Okay. But here's a little of an easy support and resistance strategy that you can apply to make simple trades. So as I mentioned, it's a pretty simple strategy there. Okay, let's go back to my PowerPoint, if I can. Okay. Because once you understand support and resistance and the moving up and down, because what happens is, Support becomes resistance, and resistance becomes support. It just depends on whether price is moving up or down. So like you see on this chart right here, this was a resistance level. But when price moved above it, it became a support level for that price. So the, the terms flip and flop. So if you just imagine, they're the floors, or they're the steps on the ladder. They're the same place. If you're stepping down, it's the next step below your feet. If you're stepping up, it's the next step you're stepping up to. Okay, so don't get involved in that critical stuff of whether it's called support or resistance. But let me give you a couple tips. You want to watch for breakouts. Price can and, and do cross their support and resistance levels on the way to forming new trend lines. Use the current level as a guide 
but realize they will change over time. Think of the changes as opportunities to make profit. When charting the price action of an asset, expect to see at least two price bounces before considering a given high or low to be a resistance or support level. Preferably, you want to see three or more bounces at each one to strengthen the signal. When you see that, then you can draw them forward. If you see that happening new and you get a triple top or triple bottom, you can add that on as a new level. Asset prices tend to su test support and resistance levels without breaking through them. You'll likely become nervous when this happens. It's normal. Calm your nerves and learn to trust your charts. When a breakout occurs, it usually does so in the context of forming a new price trend. Your chart should give you a heads up about that in advance. Now, don't get lazy with your charts. The more you trade a particular asset, the more you'll feel as if you know how its price will move. Be warned that Forex have a way of surprising even the most experienced traders. Intuition is important, but tracking price action, keeping accurate charts, and collecting reliable data is much more important. If any of the above concepts seem complex and confusing, don't worry. With time, you'll find what they are, what they simply understand. And again, imagine being an elevator going up and down and you're observing. You're becoming familiar. But they're not just random. Resistance is not just some random area where price turns around. There are potential sellers, traders who sold a Forex currency pair once before remember the collective power they had to push or say for instance you were entering the euro you're you're not a retail investor like you and i you you work for a big bank you're buying you know 500 million dollars worth of the euro and you're buying it at 106 and you want to sell it at 1072 you've already set those prices in stone when you're making your order okay. what where did he get the 1072 that was a price that when price moved up in the past, price would usually hit something at that level and bounce back down. He's going to take his profit at 107.2. So when he sells out of the market, there is going to be some resistance created or a price level at that point. Because not only him, this is a price point in the past that people have looked at. So this is a level, not that the trend is going to end, this is where the guy. But the bank was happy taking his profit for the day. He's not there to let his money run. He's setting levels. He's entering every one of his trades with it. He doesn't have to worry about risk management. He has to worry about where to get out of an asset. He said he's already setting up his sell order to sell off that $500 million worth of euro because it's not easy to sell off that much. Okay. But he's already set that up. So where does that do? It creates a hem and a haw on the price level at that point. So another group that make up resistance are the ones that bought at or near resistance and are trapped when the price feels resistance. You have others who, as price is moving up, are saying to themselves, ah, that price has gotten too high, I'm not buying in the market. So they've just moved to the sidelines so that buying pressure is easing off. They're gonna wait for that retracement and get in when price is better. All of this creates support and resistance levels in that movement of that asset. Okay. Now, if you've got them drawn on your price correctly, you will be able to do this. Now, like I said, I call it eyeballing. It is key. The identification of key support and resistance levels is an essential ingredient to successful technical analysis. Even though it is sometimes difficult to establish exact support and resistance levels, being aware of their existence and their location can greatly enhance analysis and forecasting abilities. If a security is approaching an important support level, it can serve as an alert to be extra vigilant. They can also help you set your exit points, your, your risk management points. They can help you set your target for when you're buying into an asset or selling it out of an asset. So, understanding the concept of support and resistance, trading ranges, breakouts, and breakdowns can be quite valuable. I'm a price action trader. I don't very rarely use indicators. Very rarely. I use support and resistance levels. I'm a triangle trader. 
Okay, and I from believer and price action. Price never lies. I trade from price and price formation directly on my charts. And support and resistance is one of the strongest and most dependable tools available to the trader. Remember that it is best to use any tool along with other indicators when deciding whether or when to take an exit or enter a position. Support and resistance analysis is an important part of trends because it can be used to make trading decisions identify when a trend is reversing. For example, if a trader identifies an important level of resistance that has been tested several times but never broken, he or she may decide to take profit as the share price moves towards that point because it's unlikely that it will move past that level at this time. And then we also have psychological levels like gold, 1250, 1500, 1800, are all psych levels. There's certain assets you know what the psychological levels are. Anytime we have lots of zeros or even numbers, they become psych levels. And then pivot points I mentioned to you already. And pivot points, like I said, are mathematical calculations that just come right off of a chart and everybody has the same number. But most experienced traders will be able to tell you many stories about how certain price levels tend to prevent traders from pushing the price of an underlying asset in a certain direction. For example, assume that Jim was holding a position at Amazon and that he was expecting the price, the value of the shares to increase. Now, let's imagine that Jim notices that the price fails to get above $39 several times over the past several months, even though it has gotten very close to moving above it. In this case, traders would call the price level of $39 a level of resistance. As you can see from the chart that we're going to jump over to, resistance levels are also regarded as a ceiling because these price levels prevent the market from moving price upward. So keep in mind these rules. Verify support and resistance. Remember, trends are challenged. Support and resistance often act as decisive trend changers. Places change. If support is violated, the same level will act as a future resistance. As the chart illustrates, the same horizontal trend line continues after support is violated, but with a different effect. In other words, support becomes re resistance. Price tends to retest these levels. And as you notice, as price moved down, that strategic level is very important. Price moved up, it tested again, fell back down below, came back up, bounced off of it, came back down off of it, bounced off of it again. That level was continually important. Now, one of the key pieces of information when trading from support and resistance is look for volume. Volume will reinforce your decision. If a resistance support level is associated with increased volume, the trend becomes more valid. Okay, so look for as price approaches that support or resistance level, look to see what volume is doing. It'll tell you what the traders are thinking or they're doing. And also time matters. The more recently a level has been established, the more useful it is. A problem with the current bear market is that quick losses had many traders looking well into the past for support levels. Like when the euro fell all the way down to 107, 106, and 105. You know, when the euro fell below 110, we hadn't seen that level in except many, many years before and for very few minutes. Okay. We see that with, with Bitcoin. When Bitcoin was shot up to 50 and 60, you know, those were all new levels. When they shot back down and fell back down to 20, we had to go back a year ago to find the level that was important because it had been well above it. So support and resistance levels are key mile markers in a securities progress. Whenever you're developing trading strategies, consider these points on the chart. Doing so will help you set profit targets and prevent frustration when eventual reversals do occur. So I noticed there were a lot of questions typed into the screen. Okay, unfortunately, well, fortunately tonight we have a very good turnout. I mean, I think we had 758 people register for the webinar. Okay, I can't answer. I mean, there must be a hundred questions on my screen, but I promise you, number one, that somebody from our financial analyst team will send you an email to answer to your question. Number two, as I said twice in the beginning of this class, okay, 
If you wish to see a recorded version of this class, you can use the same link used to come to this live class. We don't send out videos. We don't send out files. Okay, You can find it on our YouTube channel in a couple days. Or you can use the same link you used to click on this class. And tomorrow, when you click on that link, it's going to show you a copy of this class. So again, thank you very much for joining us. I hope you learned a little bit today. I hope I imparted some of my knowledge. Sometimes, you know, I don't do a very good job. Hopefully tonight I did a good job. It's a lot of times very difficult to get the stuff out of my head to you, but I hope you learned a lot. If you do have any questions, go to www.alvexo.com and just click on the chat button. Somebody will be glad to answer them. We always want to make sure you get answers to all of your questions. So thank you very much, and we'll talk to you again real soon. Good night now.